welcome to this new snippet in this clinical snippet we will discuss the neuroanatomy of two classical posture in a comatose patient so the first criteria will be our patient is in coma in a comatose patient we will be studying the neuroanatomy of two different postures one is a d cortical posture and one is a d cerebral posture and if we see this d cortical and d cerebral posture what will be the clinical implication what will be the site of lesion in a case of coma we will discuss before that we have to understand what are the important structures that are responsible for this kind of clinical phenomenology in a normal alert patient when the patient is conscious as we know physiologically the cortex is the predominant area which controls the subcortical structures according to its own neurophysiological limits and the normal person behaves as per the cortical control or cortical needs but in a comatose patient we have to now discuss three key words three key structures in a comatose patient one will be the cortex obviously second in the midbrain we know there is a red nucleus now this is the important thing which will be classifying d cortical and d cerebral nucleus red nucleus then in the pons and medulla there are vestibulospinal tracts and reticulospinal tracts there are normally the cortex has got a control over the red nucleus say for example the cortex does not control red nucleus what is a normal dharma of the red nucleus what does red nucleus the what does red nucleus do if the cortical control is taken away from it the normal red nucleus if stimulated if it is reinforced it will cause flexion of the upper limbs and the vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts if they are not inhibited they will cause extension of the all four limbs so remember one thing vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts what do they do if they are stimulated or reinforced they will cause extensions of the all four limbs but if red nucleus is reinforced it will cause flexion of the upper extremity it has got no power on the lower extremity it will cause only flexion of the upper extremity so first we consider lesion number 1 which is known as d corticate rigidity d corticate as the name suggests t corticate that means the lesion is above the red nucleus if in a comatose patient whatever is the lesion it is above the level of red nucleus so the lesion is here so there is no cortical control over the red nucleus now the red nucleus will reinforce its dharma and what does it do it will cause flexion of the upper extremity the forearms will be flexed pronated the thumb will be tucked inside the fingers and the comatose patient if a painful stimuli is applied the patient will do like this flexion and pronation of the upper extremity with flexion of the wrist joint fingers position like this thumb tucked inside the fingers and there is extension and inversion of the lower extremities you will see in the video extension and inversion of the both the extremities because of again unhinged activity of the reticulospinal tract and vestibulospinal tract they will cause the extension of the lower extremity but because red nucleus is also out of control it is causing flexion of the deep this is flexion of the upper extremity this is called d corticate region now in a comatose patient if the lesion is below the red nucleus now the lesion is below the red nucleus so what will happen here there will be reinforcement or uncontrolled activity of the vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts now if vestibulospinal reticulospinal tracts are now out of control of the control of the red nucleus that means lesion is here red nucleus has got no impact on these two tracts now now the what was the dharma of the reticulos vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tract extension in all four limbs 
So here, if the lesion is below the red nucleus, if we give a particular stimuli, painful stimuli in a comatose patient, now there will be hyperpronation, extension of the upper limbs and extension of the lower limbs, which will be called as decerebrate rigidity. So in this video, we discussed what is in a comatose patient. If the patient is decorticating, that is a decorticate posture, the lesion is above the midbrain, that is above the red nucleus. If the patient is having a decerebrate rigidity, all extension and pronation of the upper extremity, then the lesion is below the red nucleus. Thank you. Here we have an individual, a standardized patient. Let us assume that this patient is comatose. This particular individual is comatose. Now, on applying on applying deep painful stimulus, let us observe what happens. As you can see, the arms are fully extended as well as the forearms are fully extended with hyperpronation seen in wrist joint as well. While the lower limbs are in extended, hyperextended position, hyperextended state. This is a generalized decerebrate posturing. Let us observe it again. The arms are hyperextended, forearms hyperextended, wrist hyperpronated, and both the lower limbs in hyperextended position. This is a generalized extension phenomena. This is known as decerebrate posturing and the lesion is below red nucleus. In the first patient, we demonstrated the decerebrate positioning and here we are demonstrating the decorticate positioning rigidity in the uh, standardized subject. Now I am applying the firm pressure over the eyes. Now you can see there is a uh, hyperpronation and the flexion at the uh, forearm and hyperpronation and flexion at the wrist and the thumb tucked in and inside the fingers. And coming to lower limb, there is a hyper extension with the inversion of the foot. So what we saw, this is the decorticate posturing and the site of lesion in this comatose subject, standardized subject is below the red nucleus and this is decorticate posture.